Hello students, today we will learn about education as conceived in Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita literally means the Lord's song, that is the philosophical discourse of Lord Krishna to persuade the reluctant Arjun to fight. It is the most popular and sacred book of Hindus and is contained in the Bhishma Parv of Mahabharat. The Gita tries to build up a philosophy of karma based on jnana and supported by bhakti in a beautiful manner, considered to be the greatest contribution of India to the world. Bhagavad Gita is a universal scripture applicable to people of all temperaments and for all times. It is a book with inspiring thoughts and practical instructions on yoga, devotion and action. It is deep in thought and sublime in heights of vision. Even though the Bhagavad Gita was created on battlefield before the commencement of the war, its relevance in present context is still meaningful and considerable. The battlefield represents our body where an intense unending battle is going between good and evil forces. Metaphysics according to Bhagavad Gita is it is the important metaphysical point of teaching in Gita is being nasto vidyate bhavo na bhavo vidyate sta. Of the unreal there is no being and of the real there is no non-being. Soul cannot be killed by sword, it cannot be diminished or destroyed by fire. Air or rain can diminish it. Neither soul is born nor it dies, it is out and out immortal and everlasting. Bhagavad Gita represents the unique synthesis of action, devotion and knowledge. The truth is one but the paths are many. The Bhagavad Gita extols three major marks or paths of yoga which help the aspirant frame his personal nature with the highest goal that is realization with union with Brahma. These three paths are Karma Yoga that is the path of selfless action, Bhakti Yoga the path of devotion and Jnana Yoga path of self transcending knowledge. Although each path is different, the destination is ultimately the same. Karma Yoga is essentially acting or doing one's duties in life as per his, her dharma or duty without concern of results. One who performs his duty without attachment, surrendering the results unto the Supreme God is not affected by sinful action as the lotus leaf is untouched by water. Work is to be performed for its own sake, not for its outcomes. The one who performs an action with controlled mind and wisdom is wise. Materialistic pleasure is temporary and can be lost any time, but steady wisdom never drags us towards loss. Steady wisdom itself is taken as motivation for right action and it can also be conceived as the concept of education. The state may be stable, emotional condition, stability in thinking and action, freedom and a self-directed state. All these states are essential for holistic development of an individual and can be interpreted as education. Bhagavad Gita gives emphasis on combination of mental, physical and spiritual paths of education which are very much focused aspects in modern psychology as well. Kama Yoga is the thought and action which is guided through wisdom. That wisdom also seems to be connected with the concept of education. Bhakti Yoga is based on the doctrine love is God and God is love, regarded as the most direct method to merge in cosmic consciousness. When the Bhakta is blessed by divine grace, he feels an undivided union and non-dual consciousness prevails. Through prayer, worship, chanting and ritual, one surrenders himself to God. Bhakti may be defined as disinterested service to God, so it is a form of karma. The Lord himself lived 
lifts up his devotees from the ocean of birth and death. Now the third is Jnana Yoga. Lord Krishna reveals how spiritual knowledge is received by disciplic succession and the reason and nature of his descent into the material worlds. Here he also explains the path of action and knowledge as well as the wisdom regarding the supreme knowledge which results at the culmination of two paths. Jnana Yoga we can consider it according to some psychoanalytic insight. Krishna says the sage does not hug desires when they arise nor does he agitate the mind to create them. He is indifferent to them. Arjun intervenes and asks if you think the path of understanding is better than the path of action that is karma yoga then why do you urge me to fight? I think you have only confused me by this teaching. Tell me for certain which path I should follow. To Arjun's questions, Krishna replies, one may lead a life of contemplation or a life of action. Both properly done lead one to enlightenment. But one must understand that freedom from work is not gained by abstaining from work. By mere renunciation of work, you do not attain perfection. It is impossible to maintain even one's life without doing some work. Epistemology according to Bhagavad Gita As per Gita, yoga is essentially and predominantly the path of knowledge. The yogi's ideal is self-realization, that is state of purified and controlled mind, purified intellect, strong determination, and lost state of false ego, pride, anger and greed. This cannot be attained without knowledge. Position of self-realization is the situation of Vidya that is education. Salvation is also very important. Salvation seems to be the purpose of teaching of Bhagavad Gita. Every human in this world is in need of salvation from the type of experience they are gaining. Students in school need salvation from fear, terror and punishment of teachers and pressure from parents. Every human in this world is in need of salvation from the type of experience they are gaining. Other people involved in different activities are in need of salvation from violence, conflict, pride, ego, tension, poverty, ignorance, etc. The sick are in need of salvation from disease and older from the death. Those with disciplined mind, free from desire and anger, who live in constant contemplation of the self, are assured liberation unto the Supreme very soon. This supports that those who are free from anger, who are self-realized, self-disciplined, and constantly endeavoring for perfection are assured of liberation in the Supreme in the very near future. Hence, salvation can easily be incorporated with the meaning of education. Bhagavad Gita gives axiology as action is better than inaction. Life depends upon action as none can remain just inactive for a single moment. Inaction is death. Action are our sphere, fruits are not our concern. We should never be attached to the fruits of action and at the same time we should never be inactive. Arjun got mentally depressed when he saw his relatives with whom he has to fight. To motivate him, the Bhagavad Gita is preached in the battlefield Kurukshetra by Lord Krishna to Arjun as a counseling to do his duty. Krishna helps him to see the whole epitomized in one individual Krishna, that is God himself. Krishna tries to help Arjun to see point that he means Arjun cannot kill anyone's soul which resides in the Brahma means God himself. So education is the process of performing one's own duties for the attainment of peace, joy, satisfaction and salvation, being rid of the three rats, lust, hunger, fear, with steady mind and wisdom. Meaning of education in Bhagavad Gita is the Bhagavad Gita is known as 
an instructional module the philosophy of life and psychology obviously has the meaning of education we may derive the true meaning of education through the virtuous knowledge means sattvic gyan as emphasized by krishna virtuous knowledge is that through which we perceive unity in diversity and sense the brahma that is god or parmeshwar in all the creatures on this earth true education would provide children not only an intellectual simulation but also a real purpose in life according to philosophy of gita the state when a human is free from the three wraths lust anger and free is the state of attainment of knowledge and wisdom a state when achievement and failure profit and loss joy and sorrow can perceived in equal terms is the state of fullest satisfaction or the end state of desires therefore the gita provides very useful and practicable contents for education that can address the problems related with action salvation and wisdom in order to formulate the principles of education the divine teacher lord krishna has not imparted his wisdom to his student as mere dictation like others the gita answer the why of such education the human child in this world is not a tabula rasa or an empty being he inherits the certain tendencies instincts propensities of character mental dispositions etc from his past life parents give to child only his body but his physical apparatus and souls doing are his own this explains individual difference the bhagavad gita reconciles metaphysics and physics nivritti and pravritti psychical entity and hereditary and environment of men and gives the principles of education clearly indicating that education is spiritual social necessity it is a value and its structure cannot be built on sand objective of education according to bhagavad gita should be development of virtual knowledge development and modification of personality means development of all round personality adjustment in individual and social aims individual should have social aims uh, he should realize his duties towards the society development of internal consciousness means spiritual development a child should be developed spiritually as well development of intellectual and logical ability establishment of importance of duties in life and those duties in life should be according to the dharma curriculum on the basis of bhagavad gita can be divided as physical and spiritual under physical curriculum we can add arts science engineering mathematics as the subjects and in the spiritual knowledge a child should gain the knowledge about body and soul the knowledge how to get salvation from this uh, world methods of teaching should be conversational method as bhagavad gita shows the discourse between the krishna and arjun there was an entire conversation between the two question answer method as krishna gives answers to all the questions asked by the arjun and demonstration method the perfect teacher is one who demonstrate each and everything contemporary method means rational analysis with proper analysis and learning by doing discipline according to bhagavad gita entails upon the discipline of the life and performance of one's duty without attachment to the result in sattvic way gita rightly strikes at the root of the problem ideal personalities of teachers and deep scholarly efforts can save the untracked in discipline among the students faith on the instructions of gita can remove the problem of indiscipline and enmity that are prevailing in indian society enmity is the social instability caused by erosion of standards and values and today there is a great need 
to establish values among the students. Teacher must teach his subject with great competence, but when the issue of judgment is involved, he should let the student free as Arjun was finally left to decide himself whether to fight or not. He must be most balanced, he must be patient as Krishna does counselling to the Arjun very patiently. The true teacher not only teaches truth but also demonstrates it. The teacher should be vigilant enough to keep the soul and body of his student as well as his own together. Student should be not a disciple but a learner. The most required characteristic of an ideal student is to surrender before the teacher accepting his ignorance of the subject he wants to know. Genuineness, humanity, obedience, faith in his teacher are other characteristics of a good learner which we can observe in Arjuna as a student. He must shun three great vices, calm, crodh and lobe in his personality. The Gita has infinite relevance in a student life. It has principles with which a student should live and act rules which he should follow and traits and skills he should master. So we can conclude Bhagavad Gita specially stresses on the importance of the soul. The Lord says that this body is perishable and the soul is not perishable. Bhagavad Gita has not called the spiritual knowledge as education instead. It has taken both spiritual knowledge and material aspects in defining education and considered education as the basis for worldly and spiritual progress. Bhagavad Gita identifies moral duties, harmonious ethical climate, unity between spirituality and practice between the transcendental and material living. In this age of intellectual capital, we are busy acquiring the latest skills and expertise in the belief that it guarantees success, but success comes only when we put all the knowledge to us. The Gita introduces you to your inner personality. The intellect which reasons and discriminates the mind is the center of emotions and impulses. The Bhagavad Gita is called the king of education because it is the essence of all doctrines and philosophies. It is the pursuit of knowledge and because it gives direct perception of the self by realization. These are the references from where this lecture was prepared. Thank you. <laughs>